Hot off the back of a rejuvenating win against Brighton in the Carabao Cup, we return to Premier League action as Chelsea take on next door neighbours Fulham under the lights at Craven Cottage. But who will play, and how did Chelsea win? Let's get to it. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from Mono CFC and welcome to the lead in. Like always, I'm going to be predicting the lineups that I feel will play and show how I believe our team could set up tactically. So, without further ado, let's firstly look at our opponents for this match. Fulham are currently sitting in 11th in the Premier League table, and 3 points against them would make Chelsea leapfrog them in the standings. Fulham have had an up and down season so far, beating the likes of Luton and Everton and Norwich in the cup, but struggling against bigger teams like Brentford and Manchester City. Without Mitrovic, they've really struggled to score goals, like I predicted they would in my Premier League predictions at the start of the season. Not only that, but when they lose, they lose by a lot. They currently have a minus 5 goal difference, and without the fixture list being kind to them by giving them two of the worst teams in the league, they could have been way further down the table than they actually are. Looking at the head-to-head, -head, we can see that Fulham have had some recent success against us, but not much. However, the last time these two sides met, which was in pre-season during the Premier League Summer Series, we actually beat Fulham in a game that ended 2-0. They'll be looking to put in a better performance against us than they did in that game, and against the Chelsea team that has been shaky recently, they could see this as an opportunity to score 3 points. So, how will they plan on trying to achieve that? Let's look at the team. Fulham, managed by the Portuguese Marco Silva, usually play some form of 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, and have stuck to the latter for all games so far this season, so that's the formation I'll be putting them into in this one. First up in goal, I'm going to be putting in Bernd Leno. The German has been mightily impressive so far this season and looks like a massive bargain considering his low price tag. For the back four, it's going to be a very strong one. In at right back as ever is Kenny Tete, who does have a small groin injury concern, but I don't think that'll keep him out of the side. Returning to the right centre-back role will be Issa Diop as Calvin Bassi went off injured against Norwich in the Cup. Bassi had a great game against us when he came off the bench in pre-season, so personally I'm glad to see the back of him. Next to him is, as ever, American Tim Ream, who was rested in midweek. The same goes for the left-back Anthony Robinson, who completes the defence. Moving on to the midfield, this pretty much picks itself. Aggressive Portuguese Joao Paulinha plays in the deeper role, and will be looking to break things up in the middle. To his right will be the return of Harrison Reed after he was rested against Norwich, who may sit a bit deeper here, but will get forward when he can. On the left, but also playing almost like a cam, is ex-Manchester United midfielder Andreas Pereira, who is always a danger. Moving into the attacking trio, I believe the right side will be occupied by Bobby Di Cordova Reed. He will no doubt bring that unbridled energy to Fulham's front line. Over on the opposite flank will be the newly acquired Alex Iwobi, who is a must start in my opinion. And finally, finishing off the team is the spearhead of Mexican striker Raul Jimenez. Now, as I've said in the past, I'm going to be moving away from the tactical side of things in these previews and stick to putting that in my tactical breakdowns after games, so I'm not going to talk too much about Fulham here, but if you'd like some insight on them, I'd suggest you watch this video from pre-season where I touched on that. I don't want to constantly repeat myself in these videos, and I'd like to focus more on Chelsea from now on. So, speaking of the Blues, let's talk about Chelsea. But real quick, if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Cheers. Let's start with the formation. We know it's going to be 4-3-3, but the system might be slightly different in this one due to a few key absentees. I should mention here, because I see a lot of people getting confused about this in the comments, this is just a predicted lineup of what I think we will see from Poch, not what I would personally choose. The team would be vastly different if that was the case. So, first up in goal, I'm going to be putting in Robert Sanchez. He had a shaky game in terms of distribution last time out, but looked solid as ever at shot stopping, and he'll be looking to continue to get clean sheets against a rather toothless Fulham side. For the back four, there will be forced changes here. The suspension of Malo Gusto and injury to Ben Chilwell means that both fullback spots will be changed, and I see two ways of Poch possibly doing this. He either puts Colwill into left back and Mark Kukurea does another stint at right back, or the second option, which is what I'll be personally going for, Axel Di Sassi starting at right back with Kukurea in his favoured role on the left. 
My hope here is that Pochettino has seen the light with Levi Colwell after the Brighton game and will put him into the left centre back role where he was phenomenal last time out. Next to him we will see the return of Thiago Silva to the side who will be hoping to not give away any more goals. This will make our team very lopsided to the left, which I believe is a good thing. Most of our good play comes from that left hand side rather than the right and we should adjust our defence accordingly. In the midfield, I'm going to alter things slightly. I think Moises Caicedo is a guarantee to start in this one. He was excellent against Brighton and is starting to really look like the £115 million midfielder that we bought. To his right is going to be the return to the side for Conor Gallagher, who will come in to captain the side in Rhys James and Ben Chilwell's absence. To the left, and hopefully not playing as a 10, will be Enzo Fernandes, who was rested in midweek. I think the midfield battle is going to be really important in this one, so let's hope that these three can best their counterparts. For the three attacking players, there's going to be changes here too. I think Cole Palmer has earned his place in the team after a wonderful display in midweek, and with rotation elsewhere, the most natural place to put him is off of the right wing. On the opposite side is the rather obvious inclusion of Mikhailo Mudrik, who is starting to look confident and is getting better every time he plays. There is the option of Noni Madueke playing somewhere here after his return from injury, but after he was disciplined by Poch after that video of him partying surfaced, I don't expect him anywhere near the starting 11 anytime soon. Finally, up top is going to be Raheem Sterling. Jackson is suspended for this one and we really don't have any other option here. It's far too early to rush Brozier back into a start and he'll likely only play about 20 to 30 minutes off of the bench here. David Washington is an option but he's more involved with the youth team now and I don't expect Poch to put that much faith in the young lad. Mudrick could play down the centre too and if he does I think it would be a straight swap with Sterling going out to the left. There's also the possibility of Palmer playing as a full Stein with Sterling on the right, but I really don't think Poch would entertain this idea personally. Now, I'm going to break down how I think we should play in order to get a result against Fulham, but before I do so, again, quick reminder that I'm doing a celebratory Q&A in an upcoming video, so if you have a question for me, Chelsea related or otherwise, and want to be featured in that video, leave your question down below with the hashtag AskMono in the comments. And whilst you're down there, you can answer the question of the day. As always, I'm going to highlight some of the comments from the last video, so here are a few responses to the last question of the day. Thanks guys for your continued support as ever. If you want your comment to be featured in the next video, leave your answer to this video's question of the day down below with QOTD at the start as always. So for this week's question of the day, we'll go for a fun one. Who is your favourite player from this current Chelsea team? Alright, so how will we play? Well, I think this game will be pretty straightforward, but the change in system will likely force us to play in a different way. We will no longer be able to play the ball directly into Jackson because he's not in the team, and Sterling is obviously a different profile of player. I think we will focus a lot on getting the ball out wide as we no longer have a physical presence in the centre, so let's take a look at how the team could operate in game. This is our 4-3-3, but it no doubt won't operate this way. More than likely, we will see Mark Kukurea pushing up higher on the left flank, with Axel Di Sassi staying back in almost a right centre-back position, with Silva and Colwell shifting across to make this a 3. Conor Gallagher will use his energy to cover the right side defensively when Di Sassi needs support, leaving Caicedo and Enzo in the central area. As I mentioned earlier, the team will be lopsided to the left, with the ball being played out there more often than not. I think this triangle that forms here between Kukurea, Enzo and Mudrik will be incredibly important in our build-up, and will be supplemented by long direct balls from either Sanchez or Colwell over here on the left. I think the forward line will do something interesting too. I don't expect Sterling to stay central at all, and I don't foresee Cole Palmer staying still either. I believe what will happen is that Cole will drop into this central space, similarly to how we saw Martin do in the second half against Brighton, with Sterling making runs out wider to the right hand side. I think a lot of our chance creation will be with direct balls from Palmer if we get the space to do so. These can be out wide to Kukurea, through for Mudrik, or in and around the box for Sterling. I expect most, if not all, of our good attacking play to go through Cole in some way, and he could be the key to unlocking a stubborn Fulham defence. Crossing won't be an option for us in this one, as Diop and Ream are good in the air, and we have no height at the top end of the pitch. Playing direct through the centre is a better plan, but if we do get into crossing areas, I expect low balls across the box, or cutbacks to either Palmer or Enzo on the edge of the box. 
Let's quickly take a look at the defensive phase too. I think similarly to the Brighton game, we'll set up in a 4-4-2 of sorts. We'll aim to aggressively press like we did in that cup tie, but sit back in two banks of four once the ball is into our own half. Mudrick will drop to aid Kukurea on the left. Gallagher will shift over to the right to cover De Sassi as mentioned previously, and Palmer and Sterling will stay higher for transitions and to press the opposing centre halves if they get the ball. The aim here is to narrow the team and make the central areas hard to play through, forcing the opposition out wide. We are very good at defending crosses as De Sassi, Silva and Colwell are all plenty capable in the air, and Sanchez is a cross magnet, easily able to reach up and block balls out of the sky. Our defence has been super solid all season long, and I don't expect this to change much in this one. I think this is going to be the start of a successful run for Chelsea. The team seems to have found its rhythm against a very good Brighton side in midweek, and I'd expect that confidence to spill over into this game against a team that aren't the greatest going forward, and aren't exactly impenetrable in defence either. Fulham are a team that seem to drop once the first goal goes in, so if we can nab an early goal, I reckon we can put a few more past them too. For a score prediction, I am pretty confident this time around. I think we will win this game, but not by much. I'm going to go for 2-0, similar to in pre-season, with Chelsea taking all three points. I'm going to say that our goals will come from Palmer getting his first for the club, and Brozier off the bench with a late goal to seal it. But that was just my lead-in match preview for Chelsea vs Fulham. Thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these possible lineups in the comments section below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap on the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, or check out some of the other videos on the channel on screen right now. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues.